Hey guys, Bailey here, and it is our first STEM Sunday of 2021. Um, I have plenty of space news to fill you guys in this month, but to kick it off, let's talk about what's been going on with me. Um, very relaxing time for all the holidays in the new year. I stopped cubing for a little bit, and it really taught me how bad it is to do that. If you get in the habit of something, you should just stay with it and <laughs> not let yourself go, because <laughs> I didn't cube as much as I usually do, and now my time is back up to like... 25 seconds, 30 seconds. So I think it'll come down fast, but ah, come on. Uh, but I mean, it's New Year's resolutions, New Year, New Me kind of stuff. So we'll get back on track. Um, okay, so in terms of space, I have actually a lot of news for you guys. So I'm really excited to share. It was a big month. Um, we kicked it off with a meteor shower, which is always fun. Um, and let's see, SpaceX has been making a lot of progress with Starship. I'm sure you guys have seen in the news everything going on with like SN9 and everything like that. Uh, Blue Origin, which is another major space company, they had an amazing test flight for New Shepard. It was so cool to watch. Uh, that's a suborbital space vehicle, so it went up and came back down and everything landed. I was so excited to watch that happen. Uh, Really exciting to see more players in the space world. Um, on a more serious note, this is actually a very important time uh, in terms of space history. Um, this is kind of like a tragic week um, because it marks three huge events that happened for NASA. The first one being Apollo 1, where there was a cabin fire killing three Apollo astronauts in 1967. Uh, the next one is Challenger, which is a space shuttle that broke apart during launch and killed seven astronauts in 1986. And then finally, Columbia uh, shuttle, which disintegrated upon re-entry, killing seven more astronauts in 2003. Uh, I, highly look, I highly recommend you guys look into them and kind of see the astronauts who were there. There's some really impressive people that we lost, and it's just... It's really hard because it all happened within like a week span, you know, um, you know, over many years. But it's like this week is always really hard because we have to remember all this. And it's a good reminder that space is really hard. And what we're doing here is difficult. It does put human life on the line. And uh, all of us engineers down here on Earth have to really make sure we're doing everything right uh, and, and uh, make sure that uh, we can be better moving forward. So I like to take a minute and just kind of talk about that. Um, the coolest thing that I'm excited to talk about is actually Virgin Orbit. This is Sir Richard Branson's company, and it successfully launched uh, their rocket, Launcher 1. It was a test flight being known as Launch Demo 2, and they were so confident in this test that they even launched, launched 10 CubeSats along with it. Uh, and they had NASA education programs kind of on board. And CubeSats are super cool, and that's one of the things I want to talk to you guys about. CubeSats are kind of this new way of doing things, and they're basically just really small satellites and they're about 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters um so a cube cube sat and actually if you think about that weirdly enough it's about the size of a rubik's cube it's a little bit bigger um a rubik's cube is about five and a half or so five and three quarters centimeters so it's a little bit bigger than a rubik's cube but i mean think about this just kind of floating around up in space that's so cool right um so cubesats are a really cheap way uh it's small in mass small in space you can put a lot of them up so it's really exciting that uh virgin orbit got to prove that they could do that um yeah, I like that a lot. And Virgin Orbit is one a very, I love that company uh, because they're a sister company of uh, Virgin Galactic, which is a suborbital space company, again, kind of like Blue Origin. Um, both have their sights set higher, but they're doing a lot of cool stuff with suborbital space. And they have a suborbital space vehicle called White Knight 2. You can't call it a, a rocket, you have to call it a vehicle because it kind of looks and acts like a plane, which is kind of confusing to explain to people, but basically it is a suborbital space vehicle. So if you guys remember when I was telling you guys about the microgravity flight, we fly in that arc and then on the down part we're in free fall so we feel uh, basically simulated zero gravity. Suborbital space flight is a very similar thing. It's just a way bigger arc. It goes way higher um, and it actually goes all the way to space. It crosses the top part of this arc will cross the Kármán line. Um, the Kármán line is kind of this unofficial line of space and it's about a hundred excuse me, 100 kilometers up, which is about 60, 62 miles. And basically when you cross that line, you're in outer space. Now, suborbital space crosses that line at the very top of the arc. You get a few minutes there. Um, and there's a lot of applications for that, which I can talk about 
uh, later on, but it's not considered orbital space because obviously you don't complete a full orbit around Earth before you come back down. So that's kind of the difference between the two. Um, both are super exciting uh, and I'm really excited for, I mean, like I said, SpaceX, Blue Origin, Virgin Orbit, Virgin Galactic, all of them are doing such amazing things. And honestly, uh, despite kind of that rough patch that we always have in January, as remember our fallen astronauts, it was a very promising January for 2021. Um, I think that's all the space news for this month, but like I said, I think 2021 is going to be a huge year for space and a huge year for Rubik's too. So I'll see you guys next month and uh, just remember, keep cubing.